and this from the 1954 Calabash County Sentinel, published weekly from 1912 until 1973. Quote, when the troupe of young entertainers known as Jabber John visited our fair town square last week it was as if the mighty Joe Young had graced us with his presence. The three well-dressed youth, who present themselves as brothers named Steve, Nathan and Carl put on a performance that we will fondly remember. Impersonations, magic, humor for all ages, dime store salves sold by the jug and each night a song that had the whole crowd begging for more. These young men have made a name for themselves with their shows at local gymnasiums and high school theaters and boy oh boy did they live up to the advance praise. The one who calls himself Nathan into the evening entertaining the lasses on the courthouse steps with his fine fiddle picking in the voice of a golden child. Steve, who appears to be the eldest brother, visited the tavern across the railroad tracks and from all accounts the laughter reached a feverish pitch as he portrayed his days as a teacher of the sciences. Carl as was the rumor before their arrival, crawled into their station wagon and buried his head in a book avoiding all contact with the eager fans who pressed against the car windows hoping to catch sight of what he was reading. Young Daryl Hyden, a local farmhand, said he thought Carl was reading a book about UFOs. If you missed their performance this week, save up your nickels as they promise to visit us again once the fruit picking season has ended and they have more free time. End quote. Frog sitting on a log, one of them fell in. One frog said to the other frog, Well, you better go get her. Two little frogs sitting on a log, one of them fell in. Last little frog he sat and thought, Good thing they can swim. Jabber John, Jabber John, Jabber John. Jabber John Three little frogs sitting on a log One burst into a grin One frog said to the other frog Wonder what's got into him Two little frogs sitting on a log One laughed until he is red Last little frog he sat and thought Must have been something I said Jabber John Jabber John Yeah, we're starting off the show with a trivia question. Over the credits, we're just wondering who did the Far Side. Gary Larson is that? That's that's a name that popped in my head, but it doesn't sound right. So I signed up for the Chat GPT last night. I could ask him. So what? I said I even said him because I, I gave it a voice. The artificial intelligence. Joe signed up for it, so he got me into it. Well, what is it? Hey, who? What cartoonist made the Far Side? He broke up right when he said the name, but it's definitely Larson. Yeah. So we were right about that. Hey, out there, welcome to Jabber John. I'm your host, Nathan Moore. This is Kyle Hogg, Steve Moore, no, Jabber John. Gary Larson. Gary Larson. Uh, uh, <laughs> Special guest. Gary Larson. <laughs> Whatever happened to him? Steve. Gary Larson. Steve. Yeah, what would you do with Steve? Steve uh, passed on. Mm. I don't know if y'all heard. I, somebody called me, told me the other day. Oh, well. The old poker buddy said uh, that uh, Steve had passed on. Mm. <laughs> he was a pretty good. But Gary guy. Larson's born again. Yeah. And here with us in the flesh. In the flesh. So did he pass away, really? How did you c come up with all those really funny cartoons? I have a very uh, uh, unusual mind. Mm, I'd say. I, uh, I think differently than a lot of people. What, what came first, the picture or the caption? The, the captions always come first, because mm. the pictures are an afterthought. I'm not much of an artist, really. Um, 
Do you draw all your own cartoons? Or well, is, is my that children, a uh, one of my children does a <laughs> lot of them. He's 11, mm -hmm. and he likes to do a lot of them. Uh, yep. And he's got a technique, and he's really pretty good. He's a good mm -hmm. kid. He's uh, a good kid. So, but that's what we're doing tonight. Well, boy, you've really brought a lot of insight and humor into my life, and I'm very th grateful to I, you for it. I, uh, I'm glad to hear you say that. I've, I've had a lot of people over the years say that I was the, the funniest thing in the Stanton Leader. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Seems like we need you more than ever. Why did you stop creating, or are you still creating cartoons? I just don't see them because I don't get the paper anymore. I, I don't subscribe to, nobody subscribes to the paper anymore, mm -hmm. unfortunately. Uh, that's a shame. But, uh, and part of the reason is I'm not on there anymore. Right. But uh, yeah, they changed all the format. They still have Dennis the Menace. God knows why. <laughs> but uh, there you go. I wonder, oh, I wonder what the truth of the matter is in terms of your existence or not, because it seems like Twitter and Instagram and Facebook would be perfect formats for the far side. Too easy. Too easy. Way too easy. <laughs> you need to change, looking for a challenge. Oh, my goodness. You're gardening these days. Yeah. But, you know, I'm around. I just don't put my name at the bottom anymore. So mm -hmm. I'm behind a lot of things. Ghostwriting. Yeah, exactly. Should we find out the truth? Of what? Your existence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Is Gary Larson still alive and creating the Far Side comic? What did he have said? No, it's an eleven-year-old boy. <laughs> <coughs> Sixty minutes. He's looking it. into it. Too. The creator of the Far Side is indeed alive and has resumed creating new comics after retiring the series in 1995. Wow! After what? a long hiatus, Larson launched a website for the Far Side in 2019, where he began sharing new work for the first time in 25 years. The website features a mix of classic... How about that? So he retired in 95. That doesn't seem right. Resurfaced in 2019 and created a website. You would be a really surprised at what I did during that time. <laughs> the missing years. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I'm not going to mention any names, but I was hanging out with some very important people. <laughs> Probably in the Bohemian Grove. No, <laughs> <laughs> not P. Diddy. Oh! oh, oh. <laughs> I deserve that. <laughs> so wait a minute, how did we keep reading those? Those things seem like I saw them up until like a week ago. <laughs> what the far side? Yeah. Well, apparently he's back. Well, I mean, well, I guess he has those all those calendars and daily reminders. Well, they, they have a lot of oldies. They just recycle. That's that's what Dennis and Dennis does. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not above that, or they're not above using my stuff over and over. <laughs> now, who is Dennis the Menace? Hank Ketchum? Uh, Hank Ketchum, yeah. Hank, oh, really? Yeah, we used to play golf together. <laughs> yeah, Hank, Those would be some Hank, fun conversations. Yeah, he was a good guy, yeah. And like... he had a really asshole little kid, though. Mm, oh, yeah? Yeah, Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> he didn't like him at all. I'd it, say he was a menace. Well, he just was in a lot of trouble. He was more trouble than I'd put up with. But, but it made a living for the guy. What can you say? Mm -hmm. so, there you go. Right Family right. Circus was a single panel cartoon as well, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. yeah. God, how does that stand around? I, I like around? that format. That's still there. Yeah, how does that still so how, who did? Who does families? I can't That's, remember. That must be committed. I, I can't remember. <laughs> not a, but he was a very, he was a family man. He mm -hmm. was a good guy. He wouldn't hang out with our crowd. Right, he never went golfing with you. No, too. we wouldn't, never went golfing together. Uh, I was over at house for Sunday dinner there one time. <laughs> but, uh, real nice stuff. Delicious. Wonderful, wonderful people. Good mm -hmm. kids running around. Uh, cute kids. Not like Hank's boy. <laughs> Dennis was a mess. Oh, Texport just shared a far side. He sure did, Nathan. We're going to take a look at it. Oh, together. let's take a look at it. Here we go. All Is right. this a new one? Yeah. I'd, at I'd, the Far Side Spy Center. So they're, are they watching it? They're seeing it now. They're seeing, yeah. 
Um, Where'd you oh, find there's that? Charlie Brown. Tech support. And uh, Ziggy. <laughs> you know what the funny thing is? It's all old cartoons. Yeah, right, Garfield. Right. Na- now, what do y'all think about Nancy? I keep the reading... The Far Side's Spy Center. I keep reading, like, serious <laughs> books about how Nancy is an intellectual cartoon. I never heard of Nancy. Yeah, you, you know Nancy. Nope. The one up there in the top. Yeah, Nancy and Sluggo. Yeah. Sluggo? <laughs> Sluggo. You know how Nancy. How old is that? That's as old as the hills. Nancy, Nancy. was an old woman gun? when yeah. I was in high school. That's all I'm saying. But supposedly, <laughs> supposedly like really good artists and like intellectuals, French people, I think they're all smart. They all love Nancy. Like they think it's like a. Nancy was a, Nancy. Nancy was the, um, she was a prototype. She was a standard. And uh, they did a good job with Nancy because they were, you know, making humor work out of very mundane day-to-day uh, things. Maybe that's what was the name is. of the strip? Was Nancy and Sluggo? It was Sluggo? just Nancy. Nancy just yeah. Nancy. Her boyfriend was Sluggo, but he didn't come off very often. But hmm. it was mainly Nancy. Which, Which she one is Nancy on this picture? Excuse She's got me? the rifle. Oh, okay. It, is, what, what's her, is she like a Mary Tyler Moore independent woman, working woman kind of no, thing? No, she was a little a girl. Oh. Uh, she was about a nine-year-old girl. Gotcha. Uh, that was always getting into some trouble. How old is that cartoon? She Gosh. she dated Dennis and Dennis later on. No. Uh, oh yeah, they had children. It's from the. It's really old. It's really old. Yeah, mm. it, yeah. They 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 grew up together. <laughs> Nancy and Dennis, they deserved each other. They were both kind of. And what trouble? Yeah. Well, What's the, they just weren't very sharp. They didn't really have their act together. Mm-hmm. And then we laughed at the mistakes they would make, and right. that, that's kind of sad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we ought to just pity these. Pity's what we ought to be doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. There shouldn't be laughing at them. We mm-hmm. should be pitying them. <laughs> shouldn't help them or anything like that. Make them <laughs> give them money or anything. But we should. No, you shouldn't should, pity people. Though I don't think that's a good no, thing. No, pity's to pity not people. something you do very graciously. I'd rather have somebody laugh at me than feel pity for them. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. Because is, but there are I those having that, pity on, but that didn't you're like in a position of power in the first place yeah. or something. Is pity ever a good thing? Well, the worst thing is when a guy comes up and knocks you down. <laughs> you're laying on the ground, and then he starts laughing at you, and then he pities you, <laughs> and then he walks away. And you know that's the worst thing that can happen. I think. Mm-hmm. Well, that, well, I guess at that point it's good he has pity on you. He doesn't. Beat you even worse. <laughs> yeah, he could just keep beating you on yeah. you and enjoy just hurting you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there are those people too. <laughs> yeah. God, I wonder if I've ever told pity you. is a good thing, but it's always in a bad context. There's never just like good pity. Well, I, pity I is like the the reprieve that an oppressor gives you. So there's always. Right. Well, it means they're all on top, right? Way so far on top that they don't have to do anything but pity you. Yeah, it? right. But it also means you're on the bottom. That there's really you're having, which is probably true, and that's okay. But it just feel it doesn't make it feel any better. Mm-hmm. Right. That's well, quite an interesting. I was idea. like, pity is almost like something you feel for somebody. You have to like just keep it inside. You can't say. Oh, I pity you. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> Silent pity. Maybe you, you feel like, oh okay my God, thing. that's terrible. I feel. Yeah. Like, I and you know, know, there's a fine line between sympathy and pity, and mm-hmm. I'd never even thought about that, but that's yeah, true pity too. always comes from a bad place. I'm yeah, it's, but it's the same. Way. It's burst pretty much the same emotion. Mm-hmm. It's just an, an attitude. Now, what was that pity? Right. And what's the other word? Sympathy. sympathy. You know, you want to have sympathy right. for if, if someone leaves you you want to want people to be sympathetic. I mean sympathy could you know if we're talking about pow- power dynamics and hierarchies sympathy could come from the bottom up oh, where definitely. pity always has to come from the top down. Ah that's a good observation. Mm. You could have you could have been something. I could have done something with I think brain. you could have gone to college. I don't <laughs> I care what I don't care college. what any of them said. <laughs> the boy could have stayed in college. He could have Or passed. I could have actually learn something while I was there instead. <laughs> well, that just don't go too far. <laughs> yeah, sy- sympathy is like sympathy is like you feel sorrow for somebody that can eventually get themselves out of it. Pity is like 
they've dug the hole so deep they never i mean yeah pity they're, they're let, puts the war somehow lays the burden there's a burden put on the person right. mm -hmm. where sympathy doesn't do that it's just you telling them that you understand but yeah there's a totally different concept i definitely there. if i had to receive one or the other for i would choose sympathy every time Everybody. i'll take all the sympathy you got i probably need i don't need any of your pity exactly that's even a, though they mean the exact same thing to, <laughs> we, that's interesting yeah we decided oh that's nancy wait is that yeah that's not is that nancy yeah yeah, yeah. all right well that you i grew I up with nancy i'm not familiar with the humor i don't i'm i I recognize that archetype. You not... could go several weeks and not see any. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what was that one I missed? I'm reading could, the chat. You could go several weeks and not see any humor. All <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, but I, mean, I mean, it's Nancy. I mean, <laughs> I mean but seriously, I, I've read two we really well written funny. books about the intellectual brilliance of Nancy, which I just don't know. Well, I mean, it, Apparently had some kind of staying power for some reason. Yeah, I guess she caught like the the Times or something. I don't know. I I wasn't back when it first started, but did she sort of emulate what was going on at the time? Uh, well, it was probably funny at, when it first started, and they were. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know the history of Nancy at all, uh, but. Uh, and just made the most basic drawing. I mean, the last that, I, 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 the whole thing about the comics and like me reading the paper and that's what people are doing reading. It, it's part of the daily ritual, so it, it's part of you. It's like reading the obituaries, and I'm reading it, and and then you go over the paper, and you have these same. They're very similar. Beetle Bailey, Desmond, all of those were there when you were four and 14 and mm -hmm. 24 and 40 they're all but they all look the same every day beetle bailey's still beetle bailey right that's amazing right now they are repeating them you know but that's Did all they right even put him in different wars no or is it just no it's just beetle bailey it's just him and the army it's it's the war is sergeant snorkel <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but i think what i'm saying is the people reading the paper just they don't really need to be entertained, they may need to be brought back and say, you're home. Comfort. Right. You're, you're, com you're reading yeah. your paper. Right. You're, you're safe in your home. And there's Beetle Bailey and Nancy. It was almost like a family that would say hi right. to you in the morning. Temples of your familiar. Ah, just, well said. Just familiar. Did you make that up? No, I think I it's like Maya Angelou. So. <laughs> I love it. Uh, it's good to see everybody in the chat. Welcome to the show, Saul. Good to see you, Squan Joe. I, hey, Joe. I I joined uh, Chat GPT last night. I'm in, I'm in I'm in the fold. Got a got a month's worth to start out with, and that's how I made our new Jabber John logo. Oh, I, I, sh I shared that in the Discord. If you want to show that, Lex, mm. I, I shared it. Oh wait, no, I didn't. I shared the Daryl. Thing. <clears throat> but I can share it in the Discord. Wherever you're watching, whether you're on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, we can see your chats on our Discord server. I also encourage you to join our Discord server because it's it's already fun in there and it's just going to get better. <laughs> I can see you. What's that? All right, in <laughs> incoming. There you go. What was the cartoon like the, the hillbillies? Oh. Little Abner. Little Abner, Little, yeah. Little oh, Abner, right. Wait, yeah. who are the characters in that? Uh, well, there was Little Abner and uh, Dwight Yoakam. <laughs> <laughs> was in there. Hey, really? cousin. It's, uh, yeah, Dwight. <laughs> no, wait a minute. It wasn't that bad. It, wasn't, it was Pappy Yoakam. Happy. Ah, Happy Yoakum. was the grandfather. Well, Yoakum was the last name. <laughs> Dwight Yoakum in his tight jeans and Dwight, white cowboy hat. Yeah, he yeah. was an old man. <laughs> Dwight stole. What's that Dwight Pappy's Yoakum name? song we used to, to, to sing? <laughs> what? What was that? Nah. There was a Dwight Yoakum song we used to, oh, we used to know. know. <laughs> I know there. I know a couple of them. Something about Bakersfield. 
Oh, yeah. Streets of Bakerfield. Streets of Bakerfield. What a great Field. song. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Alexa, play. <laughs> oh, what, well, but never mind. I thought I was at home. But did, did little Adam have a girlfriend or a wife or something? They were always arguing. I don't know. I don't know. I just I'm remember not the, up to date on I just remember the, I remember the old ceramic jugs with the X's on it. You know, the, oh, liquor, yeah. the liquor or what. Streets of Bakerfield. That's a good, I'm going to play that one. That was a on. classic. I've, I've sung that. Uh, yeah. Really? Be because of you. Could you do yeah, it now? Well, that was, no. We'll get, we'll get, we'll get <laughs> How many of you that sit and judge me? Can walk the streets of Bakersfield. You, you don't go. know me, but you don't like me. You're See? an you... asshole in Bakersfield. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be watching this at work next week. <laughs> <laughs> I threw that in for you people at work. <laughs> My favorite line. You want to show this logo off? Yeah, show the 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 new the new jam that's my new uh, profile picture on Facebook too that would that would make a good T-shirt or hat yeah isn't that fun or like chewing tobacco or something mm. it's so fun playing with the AI like that we could probably sell beef jerky with that logo mm, anything Man. I do love me some beef jerky. Are you the fancy? I got a hydrator. Are you the fancy type of beef jerky or just the Slim Jim? I like all of it. I even is Slim Jim even called beef jerky? What is that no, called? It, it's jerky. It's like a cheese product. I even eventually developed a taste for the dry. You ever had like out in New Mexico and stuff? They have this jerky that's so dry. It, it's like it looks like a sheet of paper or something. Mm. You ever had that kind of jerky? It's not juicy at all. Like all there's no no hydration whatsoever in it. Oh, it's so probably it's more flat, like the old like school. Like a piece of bacon, sort of. It's, yeah, it's, oh, yeah, it's like flat that. and yeah. wide and dry. Yeah. I like and when that you too. first try it, you're like, "Oh my god!" But keep going, keep going. Eventually, you're you're like, "Oh, it's like chewing gum. It comes to life in there." But uh, Taos Hum started making some jerky, oh, and wow. theirs was more in that style. It was amazing. You never got any of that, did you, Lex? No. I remember I kept saving some for you, and then eventually I was <laughs> sneaking into that little <laughs> stash, too. <laughs> By the time you finally make, got back over here, it was all gone. <clears throat> did you ever get the real long beef jerky? The ones that were like, I mean, the Slim Jims? Oh, like yeah. I do love a Slim Jim. It's like the guilty pleasure right. of the jerky world. When I, was, when, when I got divorced, I had to sell the house. I had four dogs and a cat then. And they were like, we're going to be showing the house all day. You got to leave. I'm like, I got four dogs and a cat. What am I going to do? So I had to get in the car and just drive around for like 10 hours. Mm. So I'd buy those huge things of Slim Jims and just give it to them. They would just be back there. Ah. <laughs> no, you give it to the dogs. <laughs> just throw the whole rope back there and let them tug a word out. Have at it. Here's, here's a... A funny little thing in my world i wanted to share with you guys the every time i go into my vape store they're like oh you got to try this new one this is the new one and so like here's where i started out this is my original vape just like that sort of simple has a little indicator down there and so you're, i started with this with and then i go in there one day and they're like oh you got to try the, try this one so i tried this one and this has like a little bit bigger screen down here. I was like, oh, that's, that's sort of cool. But then the next time I went in, I was like, oh, you got to try this new one. And I hit this one. And this whole side lit up with this like little purple wow. flame that's rising up. And it's this whole, not only is it, you know, LED information, but when you hit it and that purple flame, it's a dopamine hit. It's like the confetti in a text message or something like you're like, oh, oh, it's just like a little. Now, how often do you go in there? Wait, hold on. Like once a week? They probably last about a week or whatever. But I usually get a couple at a time. Oh, I didn't know those are disposable once it's done. Yeah, it's pretty disgusting. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's very, very, very disgusting. But this was the next one that I got. And that's like a full on screen with purple flames. And it's, it was really affected me i was like oh i love that like i'm i'm a sucker for it was just a little dopamine hit to go with it so then the next week i went in 
They gave me this one. I was like, oh, wait, hold on. There's a lost angel on here. It's like, it looks like a tattoo or something. It says lost angel on the side. You hit it. And look at that. All kinds of, I mean. What do those lights mean? What's going on here? It's just. It's just dopamine, I, f I feel like. Well, what do you mean dopamine? <laughs> That's a brain chemical. It's not... It's... Like, you know, like when you look at social well, media you, and you look at... You're, you're, you're saying vape. Are you or just this out? It's nicotine. Nicotine. Mm -hmm. All right, we're talking... The I... drug we're talking about is nicotine. Nicotine, yeah. And then you throw in dopamine, and I'm thinking there must be well, some... Well, that's what I'm saying is so fascinating, is they're taking... They're adding the dopamine addiction that we all feel from social media and stuff, and adding it to my nicotine consumption. It's fascinating. Wait a minute. The, I mean, I'm not. I'm sort of like him. Dopamine something in it, or just the lights lighting no, up, or the dopamine? the lights lighting oh, up. Okay. It, it's like looking at likes on your social media okay, posts, okay, okay, okay. or how they now have added confetti to text messages. Right. So you get you're a message saying you your see. brain is making more dopamine because of the light? Because of the light. Yeah, uh -huh. your brain is processing that as a reward okay almost. the way you said yeah. it, it sounded like you were that they put that they actually have they liquid were throwing, dopamine they had liquid no, dopamine would, it, i'd buy yeah. stock in it if that was the case well, yeah now, um, are, are, are those I'm... all the same makers or are all different makers? different makers so, so in other was, words you're was... telling me that you like them because the lights got fancier every week for four weeks yeah well wait you haven't even seen what i got the last time but this is this is the next to the last time and he can and read this a book was, on this was so next level does I was like, it have oh hands look at there, there's two huge meters there's a big indicator that oh wait i don't even have the one that had the turbo that that it would be green for normal but if you hit it on the turbo the boost it would be like red and you're like, oh, let's dance with the devil on this. I was, <laughs> when we were camping, Nell was there. I was like, oh, you want the boost? I'd flip that on. It'd be glowing red when she hit it. And it was like, yeah, that's what But wait I a minute. Want. So that, but that's all tobacco, though, right? It's all nicotine, yep. Yeah. So here, the last time I went in, I mean, it's getting ridiculous. This is just, it's just getting ridiculous. I went in, I got this guy. Check this out. No. Man. Look, Look at that. all that. Not only that, but there's a little TV screen on the front. Look at that explosion. Oh, it's like a little God. nuclear explosion. All that. Can you believe that? Now, is this technology wiping yeah. out the ones before? Like if you said I like the first one better, could you still get that or that's trash? That's you, gone? you can still find these, but I'm sure they won't the, uh, last much longer. What's the price thing? What's that? They're all the same price. They just have improved. And and every might, week. I don't know if it's. If, if they're just inventing these in real time or if the people at the store have an agenda, how they're just, the first one's free and they're they're inching me up the, the ladder there. But this this is the simple place I started and now here I am today. Well, they're That's hoping, just, yeah. look at that. Well, you talk about UFOs. There's one on the back of this thing <laughs> landing in my hand every time I take a hit of nicotine. Isn't that interesting? It's fascinating, yeah. I pity you. I, I pity I <laughs> Oh no. That oh. might be a red <laughs> I just feel sorry. <laughs> Lex Lex sympathizes. I sympathize. <laughs> Thank you, Lex. Yeah. That's why he's my friend. <laughs> No, I've never. Don't they have those for weed too? I see people smoking weed out of them. Mm -hmm. what, yeah, you but you have those. to load that yourself. You buy that there. Well, some places sell them preloaded. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah, it's a so it's it, 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 you empty it out and then you just throw it away. Yeah, it's 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 horrible. You ought to at least be able to make a light show out I of it. I mean, you can buy the ones where you put you buy the juice and you refill it. Right. And, and that, if you, you know. got enough. But that's just a lot to deal with. Oh, is that what it is? It's a liquid? So you're smoking it's like liquid. Uh, nicotine liquid? Mm-hmm. It oh. seems like they would have some kind of bring it back, some kind yeah, of recycle, recycle thing yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. Like the company couldn't use that again? I can't know? bring myself to really throw them away, so i got a whole drawer <laughs> full of old ones over there. That's, how, that's how I, that's how I <laughs> yeah, created just, this presentation for go today's ahead, show. Go ahead, just put I them just, in my basement. I just, went to my, yeah, I just stick them in Dad's basement. <laughs> I pulled out a few. To... <laughs> and don't worry, Dad, they're not in one box. They're in multiple boxes all around the place. <laughs> they're at the top of every everything drawer down Where, there. Where's your father? Well, he's down there in the basement. He sniffs these things. He's trying to get that. 
uh, brain chemical. They got dopamine. Yeah, dopamine. <laughs> he says there's a little dopamine. Can in you give me one without the nicotine? I just want the lights to flash right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and water vapor too. Well, but. I was thinking about uh, what's the difference between that and getting them a real fancy flashlight. Right. Uh, you know, and he could just sit there and dopamine himself every night. <laughs> no, wait a minute. You said something. About, so when you smoke it, is it just is it dry, or you said something about a liquid? Does it taste sort of moist? Well, I mean, I guess you could do this. I was I was saying you could invent one that just gives you the dopamine hit with pure water vapor oh, without oh, anything okay. added to it. But you're not getting any water when you do that. You're just getting smoke. Mm-hmm. But how come we can't smell it or anything? You can't smell that? Hmm. I don't know. It's pretty, I don't smell it. it's pretty benign like that. I'll, I'll hit this. Like, can you smoke everywhere. that in it? I started to take a little bit of a, it's better to ask forgiveness than it is to ask permission approach with this in a lot of establishments. I'll just, that's, it's making that covert move a little bit harder. Because, mm. you know, if I'm sitting in a restaurant or something, I'll. With the fake cough. <laughs> maybe, maybe blow it into my shirt or something. Wiping his mouth on that big napkin again. <laughs> <laughs> I think I took a hit in the grocery store earlier today. Not proud, but I don't need pity. <laughs> yeah, I was driving when I, right when I was leaving New Jersey. People were taking me out all the time to say goodbye. And this friend of mine, I was in the back seat, and this friend of mine, him and his girlfriend, were in the front. And they had one of those with, with you know, marijuana or whatever's in it. And they were hitting that thing like crazy. And I was in the back seat like, because <laughs> he couldn't barely figure out the roads. So I was like, what, what are y'all smoking up there? He's like, oh, man, it's a good weed in here. I'm like, oh, all right, just slow down and stop missing every exit you're going through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they definitely make those. Don't... You can get them in D.C., I think. I no. Yeah, he's loading up his dopamine over there. Mike, we need to get you one of these new modern day p pipes that'll, <laughs> that'll sparkle when, every time you take a drag. Don't you want You know, to? I never needed that much dopamine at right. one time. I'm not a dopamine guy. I'm moving pretty slow. Mm -hmm. I like for it to spread out over the 24 hours. Here. So th those lights would just drive me crazy. <laughs> what, do you, do you, what, what was dopamine before social media? It, it must be like an actual phenomenon. It's of, just a, a neuro, what they would call a neurochemical. Right. It's a brain. It's one of the. It's the one that. It's a transmitter that transmits um, uh, happiness. Maybe maybe not happiness, but uh, feeling good. Uh, so it, it'd be like puppies and kittens and stuff. Is yeah, that like the organic? Dopamine version of, and serotonin are both used very. And, and people don't really know exactly what does what, but they both are there to make you feel better. They, it seems like you know, serotonin, drugs is that, that more of a sleepy thing? Or? No, it's more of an enjoyment thing, a pleasure thing. More like the senses are more aware and uh, see things and clearer or more enjoyably, they're in just uh, more. You're more engaged with the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, so, so is dopamine released by different things, and like sometimes when I go record shopping, I'll just come home. I feel like I'm the you know so happy. I'm like people are like, why do you love record shopping? Yeah, it's almost like oh, it's just like a high. You get, yeah, you know. different things can set you off that, that are different. Everybody's different that as you grow up and everything and. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, things that uh, made you happy when you were a young person are right. different for everybody. And, uh, you know, your, your dopamine receptor. You know, like some people really get, and I wouldn't call it dopamine, but they get charged electrically. And, and I guess what they had to say a positive way over uh, being afraid. Mm -hmm. You know, and uh, it's a whole lot. Isn't that you more know, of an adrenaline the, thing? The, the, yeah. Yeah, but you would think that it would, uh, you know, the, uh, the fear would cut down on the serotonin and the dopamine, but it doesn't seem to work that way. For some, pe for some people it does, and for some people it doesn't. Mm -hmm. uh, there are people that really engage with activity with, uh, with risk-taking behaviors mm -hmm. and, and get uh, some type of noradrenalinergic you know, all one of those fancy brain words, but mm -hmm. but it's a brain, chem your brain chemistry is affected in a positive way. Mm -hmm. And quite often it's serotonin and dopamine that are blamed for that 
when it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. So that's all I know. Now, is dopamine production, or is that like are people that are depressed, do so they have a limited dopamine? They, they can't. Or something's cutting down on the on the ability to make dopamine. Yes, that's what. The, oh, wow. so and that's you, the way you would explain it. So it's it. like a physical. It, well, it that's becomes. putting the uh, the mood into a trying to make it into a neuro neurophysical chemical. Oh wow! Uh, you know, that's what people that study neurochemistry do. They try to change. They, they try to see how the the chemistry of the brain explains behavior. So could could you actually? When you say releases dopamine, it makes it sound like it's an actual physical thing. Could you extract dopamine and see it in a physical form? Well, Could a lot, of, a a lot of, of it, a lot of it, when you say it makes dopamine, it doesn't really make dopamine, but a lot of it has to do with receptors that are on the molecules. And we have these dopamine receptors. So uh, a lot of it's not that you're getting more dopamine, it's just that these receptors in this molecule open up to absorb the dopamine. Wow. So it's it's not, you know, it's not that there's more dopamine, but that you're getting more because you're open. Interesting. And so it's a opening and closing a lot of times, not making more of it. So, Could you have a bottle of pure dopamine? Is it an actual physical? There is a, there is a chemical structure, but I bet it's hard to uh, collect in any number. Yeah, I don't know that you can artificially make it. Mm -hmm. But every human, every every body, you know, most man, you know, probably every mammal makes it. Uh, I don't know what all the other animals do, but uh, I are, think they're getting close to making it, <laughs> based on, on what that, on that this thing right here. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like melatonin, you can buy melatonin. That's something that your brain produces. That's right? probably what yeah. I associated with serotonin. Yeah, when you said it. yeah, yeah. Mel melatonin. And you could buy the melatonin tablets, you know, I guess. Right. But. You can definitely buy melatonin, but I don't think you can buy does, dopamine or serotonin. Does melatonin exist in your brain naturally? Yeah, and it's another one of those cut-off things. It's just a melatonin has these rules, roles in the brain chemistry, and other chemicals can mimic that. And again, it can just be a receptor not there to receive the message. So... Um, so if you shut down if you shut down the receivers, that's the thing is same as not sending the message. Right. So the brain is just so fascinating. Oh, it's do our do our memories sit in the cells or are they <laughs> in the electric currents? Uh, hmm. I think the brain I've been thinking about the brain all my life. I, I think the, the the memory thing is really interesting because uh, you know uh, what are we without our memories? Mm -hmm. I have a friend now who's losing his memory very quickly. I'm losing mine, but not as quickly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all of, you know, all of us are going through periods, and some of that's just like our bodies. Uh, I'm losing a lot of tissue that I never use anymore. Although some of it I want to use, but they won't be taken away. But that's the same way with the brain. Uh, there are parts of my brain that are, I'm just not able to use like I used to be able to use. And that's just part of... Is that because you're is, not using it or is it... It's um, No, no. Uh, using it helps. I really believe that uh, you know, people that do the crossword puzzle and the Sudoku and that type of thing, they're exercising their brain. And, it's, and your brain is just like your body. Your, your body... If I don't walk every day, I'm going to get worse. Mm -hmm. I have to get out and try to move. Even if I can't walk, then I have to do this. You have to keep moving. And the brain's the same way. You have to keep active. i got to get on that tip. Mm. I've never been more sedentary in my life. Yeah, it's, it's, it's important. Uh, and you'll notice a difference. Uh, it, it, it really does make a difference. Your sleep will be better. Every, everything will be better because you'll be tireder. Mm -hmm. A lot, a lot of the things we get into trouble with our brains with is we don't have. We, we're looking for something to do, but if you go out and work out and get a good workout in, you're tired. You don't need to do as much. Mm -hmm. um, now, is the brain like the body where if you really start hitting it, it'll build itself back up, or once it reaches a level, that's basically. 
You're always there <clears throat> beneath it, or can you improve it? Well, I think there's certain things you lose and you don't get back. But I think in terms of memories and things, you can improve things. But yeah, once things are gone, they're gone, unfortunately, mm -hmm. usually. Uh, but that doesn't mean your brain's just going down. You're, you're growing in other ways. Right. So if you're reading a new novel, you're learning, you're thinking about all new things. So you're still learning, but you're also forgetting things. But that's part of the process, too, because you can't remember everything. So what do you remember? Right. What do you remember? Uh, I was walking in, on, along the old baseball field the other day. Now, this is going to take a minute, but I was uh, I just, just taking my walk. I drove over to Lake Tams and was walking around. The, I played Babe Ruth ball there. I uh, played American Legion ball there. I played my high school ball there. I even played with the Stanton Braves one year there. Mm -hmm. I watched the games with my dad with Cracker Jacks watching the Stanton Braves play and Back watching when they had actual oh, prizes in that box. Yes, sir. <laughs> Every time. Little metal things. Yeah, that's what we were after. We didn't even like the Cracker Jacks. Well, no, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, so dopamine. I was getting the original dopamine hit. Yep. The right. prize in the Cracker Jack box. Exactly. Dopamine inspired marketing. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> But I was thinking, but well, what I was thinking about when I was walking around there was that I had all these experiences and my feelings there were so good. Well, I coached, I umpired, I, I played in, on that field. But I also was thinking, you know what? We lost a lot of games. I made errors. Right. I dropped pop-ups. Some of the worst moments of your life. Exactly. <laughs> I struck out in front and with the bases loaded. Mm -hmm. I had all those things happen to me. And when I walked around that field, I didn't remember any of that. Mm. All I remembered was it was a, it was my home. Magic. I, it was a magical summer time with my friends playing a game. Mm -hmm. And that was what we were doing. And uh, I thought that was beautiful. Yeah, that is beautiful. Because what you choose, what I chose to remember was the good. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's, that's exactly what PTSD is, is, when you can't get a bad thing out, mm -hmm. it won't leave. Right. If you can't get it out and it hangs around, it just creates its own mon monster. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've thought of that before, like, I'm like this, not that I try to get rid of memories, but like the same as you, I'm sure my childhood had some bad memories, but you don't ever think about them. And I've never had anything terrible happen to me, but you just forget about them. Like, what if your childhood is so terrible that the terrible just overrides the goodness? Like, man, that must be a terrible way to grow up. And when, you look, when you look sad. back at stuff, you don't have a good feelings. You just remember something bad that happened to you, or this is when Paul Paul died, or you know, whatever happened, you know. It's like, oh my gosh, that's just like a burden to carry with you for your whole life. Mm -hmm. Like you said, we have the the luxury of being able to shed all the bad. Well, we, they're still there somewhere, but you, they don't haunt your memories. You remember right. all the good they stuff. They don't pop up. They right. don't. They don't control you now. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's that's a, that's important. But we, you can if you're if you're in that place where you have had that happen, you can survive it. You can grow out of right. it. I want to tell that out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if anybody's out there feeling that way, it, it, you can you can grow past it. Right. Now, do you think if you have a memory that you forgot about, like looking at a picture or looking at a, a reading a journal or something, can bring that memory back? Oh, definitely. Yeah. It, so even though it's, it's gone a, from your head, it'll pop back in when you've. Yeah, you just and you don't know what's going to pop up. Uh, you know, I wrote that, you know, something wrote one time about how the things I, you know, I'd love, I, I know the, the, you know, the starting lineup for the Detroit Tigers in 1963. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't want to know that. So, you know, it's like you want to. If you could I'd choose, like, if you had to make room for something yeah, else, you I wanna, would. Yeah, I want to keep that. Don't, don't throw that away. It's terrible when you don't remember a, 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 a nice person's name at a party right. that you met before and were very attracted to, and 
And then you see her again, you don't even know her name. What, where are your priorities? You're, <laughs> you're Al Kaline, first baseman, right? <laughs> <laughs> you batted second for the Tigers in 1963. I remember uh, a teacher telling me at one point in school that, I've always thought about it, but it, they said that every everything I've witnessed or seen is in my brain. It's all a question of accessing it. And I feel like they had me like look up at a tile above me and it's like you 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 now know how many dots are in that tile above your desk or whatever and you'll always know it. The question is can you access that information or not? So every now and again I think about that tile up there. I've and heard that too. You, you, that if you could recall it and the author William Burroughs said once you've done something like if I sat here and threw a ball a piece of paper in the trash can there should be no reason I'd ever miss again mm. all I've got to do is just remember that motion just repeat the exact yeah. same motion and the memory is the same thing once you see it like, like what you said you know you just it's all there you don't, have, you don't really care about it so you don't memorize it but it is there in your head somewhere well that, that's an interesting thing like, because what you bring up is like how do people remember things? Like you watch Jeopardy, and there are these people that that have this amazing memory. But I think you can look at some, like some brains see a, a visual image. You know, you actually see that map of Africa. When you ask, they ask a question of Africa, right. you actually click on the map, and it comes up, and you you're can just see looking it. At it. And you end up looking at the map and looking it up and getting it right because mm -hmm. you've memorized that whole image, that visual image is stuck in there. Right. But for other people, they're trying to memorize the uh, the countries of Africa in corn, and then yeah, it's a whole different way right. of remembering. So that's interesting too. But uh, I'm terrible at that. that it's, I don't take the vi the Im the visual. I don't get the image thing. I'm not very good at that either. I don't mm -hmm. think. Drives me crazy because there's so many conversations I could have way better if I just retained the information I've consumed in regards to the topic. Because I I would I do I do do a lot of you know reading and studying things. If there's something topical in the news or whatever, I'll deep dive it and read everything I can about it. And but then I come to talk to somebody about it again, and I can't remember any of the specifics, the, any of the the studies or the stats or any of the data or whatever. It's just the gist. Right. And I, I'm a good gist guy, but yeah. it doesn't it doesn't. That's, that's what I call Jeopardy knowledge. You know, the Jeopardy. You never have to know anything with any depth. Right. You just have to know the name of the capital, or you know, the the main thing. You have to figure it out. Now a lot of times you have to use your intelligence to figure out how what the question wants you to say but the knowledge is right there on the surface it's not deep dive mm -hmm. stuff right it'd be interesting to see a version of jeopardy that was all deep dive stuff would be interesting uh, i don't know how that, that yeah. what kind of question <laughs> would think, be a good example of think, that yeah it'd be hard to satisfy people with that mm-hmm but you I know what? You, you know get, what? More but you know what? Describe to us the capital of Italy. Oh, okay. <laughs> Where do pepperonis grow? <laughs> <laughs> what were you about to say? I was, uh, I was talking about nobody. I've never heard this anywhere. But I'm going to go ahead and make it official on Jabberjohn. I'm complaining about the topics they sometimes choose on. Uh, First of all, royalty, English royalty. Mm. They're all assholes. <laughs> English royalty should not be a topic on Jeopardy. Why do you want to know that? I don't, James the First, who cares? So we had to learn it in school. It's like a, it's like a dopamine. It's, you know, this is what I learned in third grade. I know that one. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying that there, if you come from Senegal or somewhere else. Why would you want to know that? Mm -hmm. This is a country, a little island off the coast of Europe, and we want to know their kings and queens' right. names and the years. No, I don't think so. So, and and if you do know it, bless your heart, but don't make it a Jeopardy column. Right, right. And they do it all the time. I mean, they wouldn't do it for any other. 
country. Well, of well, who, who else? Uh, you know, for South America, they'll name one person out of South America. That's all right. Mm -hmm. And one person out of England, but to know the entire royal families and <laughs> when and who died while they were there, who cares? <laughs> Has there ever been a country as powerful and all reaching as England? America today? Now uh, you're saying as like just controlling just the world. Imperial, well, just... at one time they did, but that's not today. They don't do nothing today. So oh, that's what. But it had, was like was Rome or China or anything? Were they ever as well, far sure. reaching as England was? was Rome was. Rome was for its time. It didn't have as many ships, so it didn't. That's what I was wondering yeah, if they even had ships then. Well, they didn't do that kind of conquering. They weren't. <laughs> You know, they're the, like center out. But you know, a lot yeah. of the British stuff are, gets they get all the colonization, but it wasn't just them. Uh, you know, Spain was doing it, and and um, Netherlands. You know, mm -hmm. the Dutch had a lot. They were busy too. Yep, France, Germany. Yeah, Germans were all around, and yeah. So you know, it's just so weird to read like authors like Graham Greene or. Orwell or whatever, and they're all like in Africa, like it's just like an English colony. You know, they, they they had so many people down there and ruled Africa. It's like, what the hell are y'all doing down here, running everything for right, more? right resources? Yeah, yeah. Uh, boy, the whole thing, you know. You, I've been reading a lot of that early stuff about and slavery, and it's just everybody was. A slaveholder, you know. I, I you tend to think, well, you know, about the, the white plantation owner. But mm -hmm. well, golly, Ned, I'm reading about the Creek and uh, Cherokee Indian nations, and they were notoriously the tribes. That's all they did. They'd run over the mountain and try to uh, defeat another tribe and kill the men, torture them, and then uh, bring the women and children back to be slaves. Mm -hmm. That's the way they ran their world, too. So it's not like it's just a, a, a worldly, a world prevalence that I, oh. I think we need to look at. One of y'all mentioned the Dutch or the Netherlands or something. I just read a couple of days ago that when they were making all their boats, they said, we need, we need to have a ton of trees. So they planted these huge forests, you know, that, so we'll always have, you know, trees to build ships by the time the trees grown they'd already there was no more wooden ships so now they just had these huge forests <laughs> to build ships that were all now made out of steel and stuff they're like damn that wasn't such a good <laughs> that idea took longer than we thought it would you know like... <laughs> classic <laughs> we should have planted steel instead but that was, that was these... <laughs> so so i'm gathering from your what you we're just saying that uh, you have no insights for us into the latest scandals and conspiracies coming out of the royal family over in Britain. Well, I, I have my understanding. I have my understanding of what went on. And they, they just tried to keep it down and private and didn't work out. And uh, But I thought she handled it very well and I still think she's a wonderful human being, <laughs> and she has my sympathy. There you go. <laughs> but not my pity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't. I got it all told to me, but like I say, I don't remember details, just the gist. But apparently, it's a lot more complicated than than. Or there's there was a lot more to the conspiracy theory, anyways, than. Well, I, I haven't explored no, that. I'm not even sure. Are they too. breaking up? I know she has cancer, or did have cancer. Maybe. Maybe they're breaking up, or maybe she has oh, cancer. Maybe all of the above. Oh wow. I don't know. I, I I'm gonna. I, I would. I would misspeak, but. I, I, I did. I did get presented with the whole theory, when we were camping by a friend, and it was very entertaining. <laughs> There's a lot of affairs and babies and people oh, wow. winding up dead and then she comes out with this picture that looks like it's AI generated and I don't know this is just a lot going on there but I don't know the story well enough it was some it. really good internet there for a couple weeks yeah 100% people were throwing all these 
it got pretty hilarious actually. Mm -hmm. But then when she dropped the video, I, I was like, dang, that's really serious. And <laughs> shame on us. <laughs> I don't know. I felt it felt kind of wrong. Yeah, but then the next day, everybody's circling the bench from the video, saying like, oh, "Is this real?" The whole like the whole AI mm. video generated like. Because we already, before all this technology came, like, I was thinking last night about Colbert. Remember when he he, he debuted, and he was like a spoof of, like, a, a Republican news commentator or whatever. But his whole catchphrase was truthiness, that we'd entered this new era of truthiness. But that, that, was, that was the, we were in the marketplace of truthiness. And that was before, like, the social media craze, before yeah. artificial intelligence, before disinformation campaigns from other countries, which is huge and happening at an extraordinary rate. And it's, uh, it's I mean, you know, we had this, this terrible tragedy with that shipping container the, uh, ship that, crashed into the Francis Scott Key Bridge in Maryland. I'm saying all that for a historic when we watch this in 20 years and really date the show. But uh, <clears throat> within minutes, there's elaborate, proven conspiracy theories all over Twitter. You know, like it's, it's here's the video slowed down. This is how it was a hack. This is how it was yada, yada, yada. There should have been, and it's like, it's just, it's, it's, Especially going into the next election, it's it's quite a fascinating conundrum we have on our hands with truthiness and the ability of computers to generate yeah. very convincing cases for things that simply aren't true. Now, do you think for people, and I would have, to, I would consider these to be very intelligent people. You think it's like a dopamine rush for them to just make up a cons like. When they see that bridge, like, oh, we, there's got to be something. There's definitely dopamine involved. Like, in they're just like, oh, my God, theory. did you hear? Wake up, honey, wake up, wake up, what? Well, it's, the dopamine for a conspiracy theorist comes when they find what, uh, when they connect two pieces of information that seems to answer a question. Or whatever. But who do you think like, starts it? Oh, my goodness. They worked for, you know, like you're, it's like the string on the, on the thing where you're connecting dots or whatever, doing your own research and connect. But when you, each connection that you make is probably a pretty significant dopamine. So when hit. this thing happened at the bridge, and let's just, I would imagine not too many people thought about that bridge on a daily basis. I mean, so you think when it happens, people just wake up and like, I have to some, I have to prove this was, you think they just start, when was it built? Who was the president when it was built? Who owns the ship that hit it? Do you think people start thinking that way? Yeah. 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 So they're doing it more, not they believe it, it's just like a fun thing to put together. Because these, these are thoughts mm -hmm. they never, you know, I, that, so they weren't thinking you know, a Venezuelan ship, or I don't even know where it's from, is going to hit the... Singapore. Yeah, it's not going to hit the bridge. When they're like, oh, if we can tie it in, you know, Biden gave money to Singapore, and you know, it's like they can. I mean, it would be a cool, beautiful thing to build that out of your own mind. Mm -hmm. God, I guess it's like Santa Claus or something. You get people to believe it and go along with it, and it's you created something that lasts forever. Well, I mean, a lot of people just simply believe it first, and then they prove their belief with. Then they start doing their own research. Then they, what, what's it called when you, uh, something bias. Selective. Yeah, like selective bias or Land something. Land bias. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even hear that. He was a basketball player that died of a drug overdose. He was. <laughs> Can I join your free association? <laughs> <laughs> He's been, and he played for Maryland to where the bridge was, so it all ties Look there. at that. I know. Now, see, see? now did you feel the dopamine right there when you connected those two dots? You felt it, didn't you? I saw it in your eyes. They, they glimmered for a second. Yep. It's like constructing a story, like a detective. Yeah. Like yeah. if you're writing a detective novel mm -hmm. and you figure out how it could go in a certain but if, way. But I can understand that if it's like a, you say... Um, you know, the pyramids or something, but how do you come up with it right off the top of your head when a bridge that you haven't even thought of in your entire life goes down? What triggers you to be like, like, what do you even look up? How do you start building the, 
you well, know, the theory. That video was out there. I know one of the first theories I saw thrown out was that you could see explosive discharges going off and that it was all planned because when those sections of bridges are coming down, if you slow that video down, every joint, there's like a little mini oh, thing wow. that's happening. Flash of light. But I don't know what that oh, so is, but I don't think it was explosives. I just think that's part of the electrical system on the bridge and everything held together, and it's breaking, and there's sparks because things right. are breaking, and the, the power was still going to it for all the lights and everything else. Oh, so, so you're explaining it in a better way than I was. I was thinking they were just trying to have a conspiracy you're thinking that they're actually looking at I it think and seeing things. I think there's a lot of people them. that are, I think, are just like, uh, kind of maybe mindlessly just trying to troll the whole situation. Right. But then I think there's those analytical people that are like, okay, hold on, this just happened. Let's get to the bottom of it. Right. And they're like, did you see this? Did you think about this? Do you know this? Right. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, whatever the motivation for people at the at the beginning. I mean, it's that. That crash is like a perfect example of how conspiracy theories happen, and the and the the dilemma with us trying to figure out the truth. It's mm. it's it's all built. It, it's a perfect scenario because like when the ship's coming in, for one, like all of a sudden it goes dark. It lost all power, and then it sort of like turns towards the thing. Then it, the lights come back on. Then they go off again. Then it crashes into the thing. So you're just like, all right. So, whoa, that's crazy. So, I mean, more than likely, high high chance that it just had a power malfunction, couldn't control the rudder. It was all a terrible accident. Right. But there is the possibility that it was hacked by a malevolent force right. out there, another country. Completely plausible that... Uh, a country with 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 a cyber attack could do that right. could make that happen it's also completely plausible that if another country cyber attacked that ship and wrecked it that our government would know that and not tell us it's completely plausible that they wouldn't tell us that information so it's like a perfect storm it's like a perfect pet petri dish for a conspiratorial experiment right there like how will you ever trust but that do, you know how, how the do those truth? thoughts even come up to people though just poss the possibility well god there's a thousand possibilities for everything that happens and it's almost like they're wondering out loud and keep in mind all this happens before all this happens seemingly before f first responders even get there you know what i'm saying like it's so quick to spread on the internet all these things before we can even form an opinion for ourselves before any investigation. Because, right. you know, then it's like a couple days later we find out that, you know, the pilot of the ship was maydaying in and state police, shut, you know, were able to stop some traffic and that the power went out a couple times and the second time it went on, apparently they dropped anchor, which made the ship turn into the thing. That's like the latest thing I've heard. Wow. And that's based on evidence from the logs and the pilot and all this other kind of stuff. So, but all that comes after a million people post on all the socials, like what they think. Right. <laughs> and mm -hmm. some of it really gets traction. Some of, some of those things do. So um, if, if you wanted to know the, as a, as a thinking man, if you wanted to know the truth of what happened there, what would be your, path to that is there a certain amount of where you just have to not care about knowing is it is it a passionate desire to know the actual truth that drives people or 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 as a passionate truth seeker would you be more as an intelligent truth seeker would you do you have to give yourself to a place that there's just too much we'll never know about too many things to be concerned with it in that way? Well, I think you have to be very careful about how you treat the information because people are doing this because it's entertaining. 
they're being uh, dopamine by the enjoyment of, of the whole process. Every little bit, the, the making of the, the conspiracy is very creative. And then it's just like when you're on Facebook and you get the likes, you know, people that react to it in a, in a way that is agreeing with your theory is like them liking you and that's the dopamine. And so it's, you're, you know, they're getting off on that. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening in these two days, where in the past, I would wait until I saw it on the news. Well, now you just go right to Google, and that's when you, you get involved with all these other theories. I, I don't see any of that, the you know, Drudge Report and all that. I've never seen any of that. Mm -hmm. Think of how much I don't know compared to you is ridiculous. Ignorance is bliss. Well, now, it, it, ignorance can, can allow you to see better sometimes because, you know, it's just like the woods. You got too many little trees, you can't see anything. Mm. And that's what's happening. Yeah. You, you get confused by all the different possibilities. Whereas, you know, my way, I just kind of look at it and say, Let's wait and get some evidence, first of all. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got your theory and he's got his theory, but I, you know, they're just theories. I need some data here. Uh, and again, it takes time for, just like Lex was saying, there's a, usually a lapse time before real data, hard data comes into real analysis and then is explained to you. Mm -hmm. That doesn't just happen overnight, but it does on the computer. Right. So you shouldn't fall for any of that stuff. I think. The, what I, yeah. Well, I was just going to say quickly. By the time you get that data, though, all these people are like, "Oh, we're being lied to." You know what I mean? Because they've already heard all these other things, and they're like, "Yeah, that's probably what happened." I, well, that's you exactly know? where we are. You're exactly yeah. right. That's exactly what's happening, and that's why nobody believes anybody. And that's where it's, we. It's, that's where we're getting. You know, as much. Uh, an equal driver of conspiratorial thinking is a lack of, not a di not a displaced or misplaced lack of trust in authority figures to tell you the truth. I feel like that's that that's made everything exponentially worse. And but it's for it's it's not even that they're nefarious. Like 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 this example. If it was a cyber attack by China, say that did this. It would make perfect sense in a lot of ways why our government wouldn't tell us that. Right. They have there's there's reason if if UFOs landed there's a, there's maybe a good reason why the government doesn't share information freely and, and corporations maybe not as good of reasons but there's a lot of people that are at the top top that have the truth that for one reason or another might not be telling it to us. So it's like if you really want to know the truth and you're not in one of those positions of power, what what do you do? No, do you think the truth Just, is... I, the, I feel like what you have to do is not want to know the truth so bad. But that's like a that's a lot to ask for somebody. Like why don't you just why don't you just let go wanting to know the truth? <clears throat> no, it's, do you do you think or not just specifically you, but these people that we're talking about, do you think that they think the truth is being held, like let's say there's UFOs. Right. What if the government's just, they know we would freak out, so they're right. doing it for our own good. Right. Like Santa Claus, you know, that parents just want you to believe and be happy and eventually you find out. But do you, th it's, I don't, like the UFO thing seems weird to me because there's so much proof of, you know, what stuff is. But then I can also see the government's like, we just can't come out and say it because people will go, you know, ape crazy, you know, running around if they figure out they're just, so I don't always see it for a bad reason. So maybe I like being lied to. Sometimes. But I mean, it really puts the the regular just truth seeker at a at a terrible. You know, it's like a running joke at this point that every president is like, "I'm going to get them to show me the files." You know, the the Clinton ran on it. Obama. I feel like every president that run, even Trump probably said, "Well, when I'm president, I'm going to release the UFO files." And then they get in there, and then you never hear another word about it. X but and A on the UFO. How much truth do you think a human can take? <laughs> I mean, seriously, you can't handle no, the seriously, truth. Seriously, <laughs> if, no, seriously, if, if you knew everything people were thinking about you all the time and all the stuff that was going on, would you want to know that? 
I don't know if I can handle the Capaldi. No, I would not want yeah. to know that. I'd be curious. I'd love to have that for a day. I've never, I've never thought about that before. But like, how much truth can a person take into their body before they're just like, oh my God, tell me some lies, lies sweet lies. <laughs> tell, butter me up. Pity me. Pity me, please. No more truth. <laughs> I'll take pity before that other stuff. <laughs> just, just, just don't tell me the that truth. other stuff in the stew, I don't I mean, like it the all. Tr <laughs> the, the truth can be so brutal and so disabling, man. That would, if you would be, you know, like, what if you found out, you know, your parents like, you know, my brother more than me? And I really knew that was the truth. How would I ever, you know, or, or my dad I was, I was would say, oh. I change my mind. <laughs> I, I might actually enjoy this truth serum. Oh, my God. Or, you know, I have a baseball game. My dad goes, you look good. You know, you're getting better. And then, it, then I f go home. And I, he goes to sleep. I can hear him thinking, that motherfucker's never going to get any better. He's no good, you know. I'm like, I'm like no, Dad, don't think that. I'm trying as hard as but, I can. Now, <laughs> but now, just like my baseball field, now, but when you walk around right now, if you walk around with your dad, you only remember the good stuff. Well, that's what, and I and I think he was telling me the truth. He, saw he was potential. trying to be good to you. Yeah, but I don't think he. I, I he don't wasn't think trying he, to hurt you by right, doing that. But, but if if I, he was like, was he really thinking? God, I wish I had him as a son. He's two times better than Kyle is. You know? never... Just like random dude walking down the street. <laughs> yeah, I wish that was my son. <laughs> I mean, just think, just think, if somebody's like, just think when people tell you the truth. Like, if you're breaking up with somebody and they just, just tell me the truth and they tell you, you're like, oh, forget that. Why'd you ever tell me that? You know, it's like, I don't know. Well, yeah, the truth. the truth can be really, really bad. Uh, I, I feel like I could handle the truth. I feel like I can handle all y'all's truth, the whole world's truth, pretty well. Some of it would be traumatic, but I feel like I can handle it. Going the other direction would terrify me more. <laughs> y'all knowing, knowing my truth, truth yeah. is way more scary to me than oh, me yeah. knowing yours. And that's, I, yeah, that's where it's I'm true pretty true. confident with that. Yeah, just just think like you made dinner and everybody's like, oh, it's great. Then you could look inside their head. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I've never invited these people over for dinner again. You know? I feel like I can handle all that. Oh my God, the truth would be. Do you think you can handle Puff Daddy's truths? <laughs> well, I, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't think I can endure them, but I could handle knowing them. I mentioned this a couple months, probably. Yeah, what's up with the bag yeah, over I, here? I mentioned, Let's do some fries I mentioned this many. Oh. I mentioned this. Can we talk about the bag first? Or? No, this is. I mentioned this many months ago. No, and this is a game I bought. It's called Feed the Prophet. Oh, you talked about this yes. before, right? But look at that. How do you play this game? There's no directions. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's just like it's a spinning wheel. He'll show it. It's a spinning wheel and some oh things. Oh, my goodness. And you've got to just move six spaces to feed the prophet. <laughs> so maybe instead of having conspiracy theories, if we can all just feed the prophet, we will. <laughs> this has never been played, no, has it? No, but, but some way got rid of the directions. Like the packaging is all. So if any of y'all out there ever played Feed the Prophet as a child, please let us know how the game is. Man, played. look at that age. I love it. So it's so three, these are all the same. So huh? it's four, is it three or four? Little cards where the bird drops food for the prophet. And you spin the wheel to move. Oh, I see. But what kind of weird game is that? That's there's gotta be a conspiracy <laughs> that this isn't it? Isn't that the weirdest thing ever? Feed the it's prophet. Interesting premise. It really <laughs> no, is an interesting no, no, premise. Nobody, no clue who made it or anything. There's no like marketing. There's no like if you want to order one. Is that one, an antique store find? Yeah. Wow. Like if you want to order one, if you want to co contact the company, there's no way to contact anybody. Wow. That's, un that's unbelievable. And the prophet is just like an old, a skinny guy with like a, what do you call the thing around his waist? Uh, not a shawl, but whatever that's called. Hmm. So now we have conspiracy theories. In the old days, they just fed the prophet and see what he said. The, like, text, <laughs> was too, the text was too small for me to read, but was are those the directions for the game on the card itself? Oh, I didn't even see it. I thought there was no directions. There's, let me see one of these. Like all that. It's too oh, small it for is. me to read. Yeah, you're right. That might be... 
I'll play you. Bean says, I have rules. How do you differentiate between a conspiracy theory and a delusion? Mm. Mm. Well, most of them are. You, and that's the, that's the trick. Figuring which ones aren't and which ones are. But uh, that was love and that's delusion. That's where your detective that novel theory? skills come in. Right. That, that, that's, that's, that's it. Is it like a level of conviction, maybe, that makes a difference? Like, you throw a conspiracy theory out, you're just giving somebody to chew on, but a delusion is like something that you think is real real to you. It is the reality to you. To mm-hmm. you. Yeah, like the flat, earth, flat earthers seem to be somewhere between a conspiracy theory and a delusion. Well, delusion's almost like something you can prove is not true. Delusion, you can't really prove that, that's the, the, that the conspiracy's not true. I'm going to get Percy to, to define But if you're delusional, you can say, no, his face is not growing. Yeah, I, I agree with that. His face is not green? Is that what you said? Like if somebody was like, oh, my God, Mr. Moore's face is green, you can say, no. A false you. belief that is resistant to confrontation with actual facts. The state of being deluded or misled... Or a process of deluding somebody. Yeah, we talked about it. Whoever mm-hmm. asked that must be delusional to think that we could give you a serious answer. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, delusions were invented by the pharaohs. <laughs> uh, King James, actually. Uh, uh, 1482 was, uh, to 1486. Exactly, I got it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You got it. <laughs> I mean, hundred dollars. You know, I mean, <laughs> Mr. Cog's file at this point. <laughs> but like, that's a perfect example of like a like the King James, like you know, at at the time, they were they presented this Bible as the Word of God, the true and pure Word of God. Meanwhile, behind the scenes, these these guys and authority figures were picking and choosing which verses to put in it and which right. ones not that suited their agenda. So like the conspiracy theorists would be have like, a good editor, though. you do, you do. <laughs> but I mean, there all throughout human history, there have been valid conspiracies going on. People in power and authority doing secret things to control, to manipulate the mechanisms of society and their own wealth and things like that. I mean, it's, there's, and on the ground, there have been people, the conspiracy theorists that were like, oh, well, you know, they, they've edited this book. They, you know, they're, I don't know. There's, but it, it's, is that, <laughs> when people do that, I totally understand what you're saying. And I agree with you, but do you think that's conspiracy or that's just the way people are? Always working behind the scenes. Yeah, just as an intellectual, you should understand that, what you're seeing is not the brilliant white truth that's, you know, pieced together. I mean, every, nothing you see is just, you know, honest truth probably. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely fall on what you're alluding to there because for, for all the modern-day conspiracy theories, I usually wind up falling on, like, greed and a lot of times ineptitude right. that led to that, like, incompetent, greedy jerks right. <laughs> as opposed to like purely nefarious like let's let's i don't i don't know greed I, power mm-hmm. power is a big one mm-hmm. people don't know how to handle it but that veil of secrecy between the the power structures and the people i, I feel like will always keep conspiracy theories alive and there's always going to be conspiracy theories that are valid that are that have they're like they've they've actually seen a connection and they they're right right and yeah, that's true and it's there's there's plenty of examples of that all through history then a whistleblower will come out and and right. they were on the inside and they come to the outside and they say oh yeah that was a nefarious right. thing that was going on this whole uh, ai thing has done nothing but multiply everything You're exponentially by exponentially exactly now here's what i've been thinking about lately that i think is pretty fascinating so ai is using like the bulk of human knowledge to decide what is quote unquote true but at the same time 
other AIs and even itself are creating false history, false facts, false knowledge. So if we can figure out how the ultimate AI is going to discern between truth and delusion, then maybe that will be a, a power. Either that'll be like a powerful revelation that could really help us, or we'll find out that it can't tell the difference on some level. Mm. But there's... there. So in other words, AI who might be making all this exponentially worse might also at the end of the day be our savior in this if it can figure out how to disseminate fact and fiction in a reasonable way, then maybe that will serve us yeah. in, in these questions. But I, I do feel like it's it's shooting itself in the foot because AI is also being used to create fake news. So if it's scouring the news to figure out what happened, it's going to have to decide between a fake story and a true story to be any service to us at all. I'm, I'm, I'll keep you updated on that. Well, I was thinking about AI today because I read this thing on Facebook. Some, some lady with totally good intentions posted... If all young females voted, we could change the world to be like what we want it to be. And I thought, man, what a beautiful thing. And I was like, that is so ignorant to think that all young women think the same. The world could become a shithole, because I know some women that their thoughts are so screwed up, you wouldn't want them voting for anything. But the power of thinking, if we all bind together, we can, because we all think the same, AI and, but, and against us. AI, I mean, our brains are as messed up as AI is. I mean, cause if you've got a, if you, you and your 100 friends, like, let's vote for this person, that's great. Then you vote, then you invite 20 million people to vote, you'll be sitting there going, why did we do this? You know, it's like, <laughs> I think people would think that AI is against them because they think all humans are the same, sort of, which humans are, you know, however many humans there are, there's that many ways of being different. And AI is just another one dropped in the middle, sort of. Hmm trying to play, trying basically trying what that person's doing, trying to figure out what's the middle ground that's going to please everybody, sort of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When really there is no middle ground because half people never voice their opinions, so you don't know, and half are crazy and half are, you know, noble beings. So, <laughs> you know, the, the system that's trying to figure it out, it's like, oh, my goodness, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. But it is a beautiful thought to think we if we all just vote we'll change the world and then we all vote and you think what in the world that's not what I wanted <laughs> <laughs> almost without fail yeah did you bring us a a lesson today oh yes I did yes. Uh, yeah I'm gonna try to do one every week and uh, uh, just start thinking about something and I'll write it down and say I ought to do a lesson on that so. I did one the other night. I was thinking about it, how it affected my life. And uh, so I'm going to go ahead. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. You ready to be a student? All right. What, what does it mean to dilute something? It's like water it down. Water it down. Would you agree with that? Yeah. Take the power out of it. Take the power Add out of it. Add more of something else so it becomes Add, less of the majority of the Very substance. good. I like that. That's that's a dilution. That's exactly what it is. So what's the word that you would use if you were going to do the opposite of dilution? Condense. Distill. Um, hold on. God, distill. What is Let me think about what distill is. That's right. Condense? Um, no. Enhance? Condense is close to where I'm, what I'm thinking. Saturate. Oh, that's a good one. That's close. That was from the chat. That's, uh, that's not it, but that's, that's discussable. Um, the opposite of dilution is to... Overpopulate. If you add something, what do you increase? What the blank percentage? Like, like ninety proof is a lot more what than uh, strong fifty proof. Concentrated. Concentrated. Yeah. All right. So you got. Yep. Five points. (laughs) Dilution 
and concentration. And there, those are verbs. And then, of course, you have the, the, the idea of the concentrate. So if you buy uh, consecrate you know, uh, orange juice, you're, they've taken the water out. Mm -hmm. So you add the water and you've got all that. So that's the idea. You dilute a concentration of orange juice. The, 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 or, the frozen orange juice is concentrated, right. cause, which means it doesn't have that water that we we're talking about. Mm -hmm. So you're diluting it when you unfreeze it and put it in the pitcher and you pour th the, the bottles of water, each one you dilute, you dilute, you dilute till you get it to where you want it to be. So drinks are, in drinks especially, I would think it's so important to understand as a drinker um, what we mean by diluted and concentrated. Because, you know, to order a drink in a bar it's nine dollars. You know, you expect a certain concentration, there. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, and uh, if you don't get it, and of course, if they hide it in a fruity drink, you're not going to taste it. So, you know, there's just all kinds of little things you could play around with. The bartenders know all about. Not that they're trying to cheat. Usually, they're usually very gracious and give you more mm -hmm. because it's also beneficial to give you more for obvious reasons. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so here's what I was thinking the other day how like I'm living alone, older person, dilution and concentration. Here's how I use dilution. Two ways I used dilution the other night. The first is one of the things I do is I drink a fruit juice, an orange juice mixture and uh, mix different juices together, but I don't want all that sugar. So I fill the, the, this up with ice, and then I put enough juice in there, and then I sip it during the night. And about three times during the night, I'll load it up with ice again, mm -hmm. and then add a little bit of liquid each time. Well, first of all, you're, what, what you're really doing is diluting your drink tremendously which is good because I don't need all that sugar. But I, was, I want the taste and I'm getting enough of the taste. So you dilute it to the point where it's acceptable to you. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's what you're comfortable with. But you're eating that, you're, that ice is melting and you're, you're, you're drinking the liquid, which is the water, which is that, you know, say, much better for you just to drink water. Mm -hmm. So if you're, you know, for me, I should just drink water all day, but I, I do have a couple. You need that dopamine. I need a little pleasure in my life. <laughs> I do. I'm not totally avoiding that. So that was a good. Then I said, well, you know, here was another example of dilution. This is a good one, too. Ensure. I've been drinking that Ensure, that chocolate drink, and it's, uh, you know, it's pretty expensive. What is that? What's that? What's it have in it? It's got a lot of it's got a lot of protein. That's why I take it. Mm. But that's what they advertise. But it's just got all the vitamins. You know, it's just a healthy drink. But it's you know they charge a whole lot for these little glass the little plastic containers. So this is all good for recycling, because what I'll do now is I bought some chocolate milk, which I had never done before. <laughs> My mother wouldn't let us buy chocolate milk. so But but I went in the other day and I bought chocolate milk. But what I I'm doing now delicious. is, uh, what I'm doing is taking the, uh, mm. the um, insurers and I'll leave a little in the bottom and I'll pull it up with chocolate milk <laughs> and then I'll put it in there with the others. And then every once in a while I'll get one that's just chocolate milk. I hate, to, I hate to tell you this, but you're delusional. <laughs> <laughs> I'm delusional. In, in delusional. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's genius. laughs> I've discovered my problem, doctor. I'm delusional. <laughs> well, you know, if we had planned that, we could not have done it. That's all I have to say. I'm through with my lesson. Isn't that more akin to putting your aristocrat vodka in the Grey Goose bottle back in the old days? No, that's Stop fucking it. lying. <laughs> that's what? Lying. God, delusional is a great term. Yeah, that's funny. Oh, my God. Oh, gosh. Yeah, so... But, you know, in terms of 
Like for instance, this, what does proof mean? Well, it's a, it's a, it's simply a method of measuring concentration. Right. So uh, you is do, proof? We how deal, does that work again? It's double the it, percentage. It, do so, you know what's the rule? Gosh, I don't even know. See, people, I, I never knew for a it's long. It's double, time. right? It's a double. So if you're talking ninety proof, you're forty five percent alcohol. Right. Now, how'd that come about? I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, so the uh, the grain alcohol, which is pre, you know, pure alcohol, but it still has to be diluted some, but it's 190 proof. Oh, that's like 95%. Whatever. So that's, 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 could it, that does, should be does avoided. 200 proof exist? Well, I, I don't know. I think it has to have some water It would just in explode it in your hand. Yeah, You'd it open is. it and die. <laughs> <laughs> now, so the di the You'd start dilating. running around acting like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> is there any way in your life that you're concentrating? Was that part of the story, too, or you're just diluting? Concentrating what? Like what you were talking about with the milk and the, the orange juice drink and stuff. Is there any part of your life that you're concentrating? Oh, okay. Uh, let's see. Or have I increased the concentration? Um, Get more bang for your buck. You doing that anyway? Yeah, um, I'm taking. Uh, I'm I'm eating more gummies, but I don't think that's <laughs> concentration. <laughs> I just don't trust them. They, I mean, I have this one box that says for sleep. Well, what the heck? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't get that. It, but it tastes good. I don't know. I haven't slept any better or worse. But I don't hey, know. Vicky's in the chat. Good to see you, Vicky. <laughs> hi, Vicky. Oh, and Michelle. Hey, Michelle. Oh, yes. We got to say hi to I Michelle. I talked to your daughter this weekend. She was... Uh, Spoke very fondly of you and of the show. Maybe want to say hi to you. Hi, Michelle. Wow, we did it again. Are we done? Well, I, we're it's it's eight thirty-two. I, I, I couldn't believe it when I looked at it. Well, I'm fine. I'm I'm. Let's just concentrate on the, the on a song. On a leaving song, boy, is. I'm curious to see what we come up with. I don't. I don't I didn't pre-plan a song, so I couldn't shape the conversation to fit it. <laughs> <laughs> and I try to keep my conspiratorial thinking out of my, my songs. I try to keep my songs pure. So you can't do the Dwight Yoko when you'll get in trouble, right? I don't know it. Uh, request. What do you got? Mm. That might work. Haven't we done, have we not done that recently? What is it? Do you believe in ghosts? I haven't heard it's it good, for a while. I'd like, to hear, I'd like to hear it again. You don't know me, but you don't like me. <laughs> Say you care less how I feel. Hey, there you go. How many of you that sit and judge me can walk the streets, the streets of Bakersfield? That's all I got. <laughs> That's all I had to. <laughs> it's a great song, though. <laughs> and he was a little amber, that's the best part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go check out Nancy and Little Abner, because I don't know what the heck you guys are talking about. Although I feel like I remember... She was the, the only the, thing... The, the ceramic bottle of the... The snappy, scruffy, snuffy... snuffy. Yeah, Snuffy Smith. Yeah. Yeah. What, is, is that a, that's a whole nother comic? He's not a character of Little yeah, Abner. Nancy was the only female cartoon character that I didn't have any emotional attachment to. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Snuffy Smith's what I think I'm thinking of. Who's Little Abner? You took me off some road. Excuse me, I'm, I, I'm thinking about Daisy May right now. <laughs> <laughs> she was a buxom lass, <laughs> as I recall. Hey, Josepha. <laughs> <laughs> and then there was Ellie Mae. Ellie Mae. Ellie Mae Clampett. That From the Beverly Hillbillies. Yeah, that was, a, <laughs> that was a pretty young lady there. 
Daisy May and Ellie May. I just now drew the conclusion. <laughs> <laughs> you're concentrating, you're concentrating your women down to one last name. I did. I concentrated <laughs> that image and it came together. They, they both were in the same part of my brain. You're exactly right. I think I know, I think I know, I think I know the way back home. I think I know, I think I know, I think I know the way back home. I, I didn't mean to stray so far, I was following a shining star in the middle of the day, it vanished, and with the night just came the dark. I met a wise old man, strange singer, he pointed down the road, his crooked finger, he gave me his hat, and that was that, I'd been stung by fate's stinger. Now I think I know, I think I know, I think I know the way back home. I think I know, I think I know, I think I know the way back home. Okay, I admit I fell in with the floating aces Even they had their saving graces I remember the first time we walked on air The laughter, the looks on their faces And every great leap lands in the hand Of something greater that we can't understand And those who think they know don't leap And those who leap don't know a damn I think I know, I think I know, I think I know the way back home. I think I know, I think I know, I think I know the way back home. so much everybody we'll see you next time nice love y'all do good jabber john perfect choice it actually sort of fit yeah, i was I making did. connections yeah. i was connecting the dots yes I was you like, were oh yeah. that line connected to that part of the conversation yeah. i think maybe he was thinking of that the whole time i don't know i mean this just reminded me of people that get like uh some of the trump like stormed the capitol and now they say they wish they hadn't believed you know almost like I think I found my way back. Like once you get out of that cycle, you know, you can sort of see the clearness again. Mm -hmm. I thought that's why you're playing. Like you were tied it into that. 